I hate wasting money. With the new changes in Google Workspace, you could be paying upwards of $18 per user to use Google Workspace. The frustrating part is you can't even choose a cheaper license for a different user that's not going to use all of the features. So that email that you have with info at or sales at, these things are costing you monthly fees. But the good news is today, guys, I'm going to show you how to set up those emails for free using Google Groups. So let's go ahead and jump in and save money together. I love helping people, which is why I made this video and other videos like this to help you succeed in your business. If you haven't already, go and hit that subscribe button so I can continue to make videos to help support you and your business. Also here at Nextec Consultants, we are consultants. So if you ever have any issues with this video or any other technology in your business, go ahead and shoot us an email. You'll find that link in the description below. And we'd be happy to set up a consultation with you to review your business and see what we can do to help you succeed. So let's move on to Google Groups. Many of you might be asking, what is a Google Group? Think of a Google Group as a collaborative inbox. You can add users to the group and people in the group will get emails that are sent to that email. So it sounds a little bit like an alias where let's say my email is josiah at nextsetconsultants.com. I can have an alias that's josiah.me at nextsetconsultants.com that also comes to my inbox. But a group is different in a way that an alias can only be attached to one person. A group can be attached to multiple people. So for like that sales department, you can have multiple people receive the sales email into their inbox and also have email history within this Google group. So it's a really nice tool, especially with department emails. So now that we understand a little bit of what a Google group is, we're going to hop over and we're going to create a Google group. And I'm going to walk you through different permissions and different steps in creating those. So let's jump on in. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to go to admin.google.com and you're going to sign in with your Google account. This does have to be a business account. You can't do this if you're using a personal at Gmail account in the same way. So go ahead and sign in. And once you're in, we're going to go ahead and click on groups. And here, what we can do is we can go ahead and create a group. There's a few things you need to know about groups. So group details, this is the name, just the name of the group. So it can be sales department. We'll do that example like I talked about earlier. Description's totally optional. I typically leave it blank blank because I don't need a description because the name kind of defines it for me. If you're doing something that does need one, go ahead and put it in. Uh, but your group email, we're going to say it's sales. So if somebody emails sales at your domain, it's going to go ahead and send an email to this group. You, you would want to specify a group owner at this point. Uh, for me, I'm going to specify myself. And we're going to go ahead and click next. And so this is where it becomes fairly important. So if it's a public email, that means right now, based off of these permissions, anybody in your organization can email this email. Then we have team announcement only restricted. I typically do a custom one because I change permissions. So contact owners, that means they'll be able to look at the group, find out who the owner is and contact them. That means they can request, they can do all of those things. What I like to do is I like to really only have contact owners for people in my org and I don't like to have it external. External means people that are not within your business domain. View members means that they can go to the group and they can view the people in the group. This is completely up to you whether you want your organization to see this or not. Um, if you don't want your organization to see it and you only want the people in the group to see it, go ahead and uncheck entire organization. View conversations. This is probably just the people in the group, especially a sales department where you don't want people who aren't in sales to come in and start to view and see stuff in the conversation. Publish posts. This needs to be external. What that means is somebody with an external email address. So if you have an at gmail.com or at yahoo.com, they can email your sales department and it will be allowed to come into the group. So if this is an external group where you want people outside of your organization to be able to contact you by this email, you need to have this marked external. If it's an internal group, 
there's a couple of different ways you can handle it. If it's just a distribution list, you would take it off and say only owners can email this group. So for example, if you have a large staff of people and you only want the people who are owners to be able to email the group, then you would click this. What that does is the owner will email the group, but everybody in the group will receive the email. So it's more of like an announcement only email, kind of if you go to these permissions. So that's really nice, especially if you have large teams and you just want certain people to be email those, be able to email those teams. So I'm going to get back to my custom permissions where we had it like this and what we can do manage members. I really only want group owners and group managers to be able to manage members. I don't want my members to be able to add people and remove them. Um, this gives you a little bit more control in deciding who can manage the group, who can join the group. Uh, for sales, I typically only do only invited users. Uh, you can say anyone in the organization can join or anyone in the organization can ask. If it's join, they can just come to the group and they can join it. If it's ask, then they can come to the group and request and you'll get an email that needs to let them in. Or if you're only invited users, then you invite them in and put them in. So I really only want invited members. If you want people outside of your organization, you have to check this box. For sales, I definitely don't, um, but this is good for like, if you have a board member group for your organization, you can add board members into this group, even though they don't have an email within your domain. So those are kind of the different options in the generic settings when you create your group. So I'm gonna go ahead and create the group. And it'll say it's done. Now, if you click on the group, it'll show you all of the owners, all of the direct members, all of your managers, and tell you a little bit more information about the group. What you do want to do to kind of get a little bit more customization in emails, you want to click settings and go down to advanced settings. There's a couple settings in here that we really want to make sure that are on. If it is a collaborative inbox like sales is, go ahead and check that. What that does is allows you to respond to your emails and communicate within the group a little bit more effectively. Now, most of these settings are already set from their original setup, but if we scroll down, you want to make sure that under posting policies that your conversation history is on. If it is off, any emails sent to this email will not be kept and recorded for history. So it's really important to have this on as it keeps history and we're able to view what's going on in the group. So we're gonna go ahead and save changes since all of that's on there already. And now your group is created. As messages come into your group, they'll come in looking like this. What it does is it allows you to reply to your author, reply to the email within the group. An important message since we had view posts to allow members to view the posts is when a post comes in like this, anyone in the group will get an email that matches this. So what'll happen is in their inbox, they'll get an email and they will be able to either reply in their inbox or come to the group and do the replying and talking to the person. All right. And finally, what we're going to talk about is adding members to your group. So there's a couple of different ways you can do it. We're going to click on members and what you'll see here is an add members button. So with this option, like it says here, you are directly adding members. You put in the member, you put in the welcome message that you want them to see and you can choose their subscription status. So each email means every time an email comes in, they'll get a notification. Digest is every time there's about 25 messages, it will send it. Abridged means up to 150 messages, but at least once a day. So I would choose, especially in sales department, I choose each email. We're going to go ahead and add a member. And now they're in. So when they've just got received an email that says, Hey, welcome to the group. And every time somebody sends an email to this group, it will then alert this person and let them know. The other way is to choose unchoose directly add members. And this you select members and you actually write an invitation message and you send them an invite. They will then get an invite and subscribe to the group. This is helpful if it's uh, an announcement group that people might not always want to be a part of, um, but you're going to give them the option to. So that's another way you can add members. So that is how you create a Google group and they're free. So you can create as many as you like. They can be alias emails. They can be anything you need in your domain.
there are a lot of ways to uh, manage a Google group more efficiently. And I'll have a video out on that in a couple weeks. So make sure you hit that subscribe button to see how to manage your Google group more efficiently. But until then, I will see you guys next time and I hope you have a great one. Thanks.